All right, welcome. This is the Prometheus 2023 ecosystem update. Uh, my name is Ben Kochi. I'm a principal engineer at Reddit, and I'm also a member of the Prometheus developer team. With me is Julian. You want to give yourself a quick intro? Yeah, so I am maintaining the Prometheus server, and uh, my work is supporting Prometheus customer all day long. So, Cool. So uh, who's used Prometheus 1.0? Oh, wow, a lot of 1.0 users. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, who's not using Prometheus yet? Cool, nice. Well, welcome. Uh, what is Prometheus? Prometheus is a metrics-based monitoring system. Um, and uh, it's designed to pull data from all of your servers and all of your software, uh, infrastructure, uh, applications, uh, pretty much anything. Uh, it provides a basic uh, built-in web server, uh, data storage, and allows you to do uh, uh, extremely powerful data queries with PromQL. Um, and it can scale from anywhere from uh, sitting on a Raspberry Pi to uh, global uh, hyperscaling. So uh, Prometheus started in 2012 back at SoundCloud where we had uh, already started experimenting with container platforms uh, before Kubernetes even existed. And we had the problem of, we've got all these containers, but we, we can get data out of them with StatsD, but StatsD doesn't actually let us know that the containers are running. So we needed a, an active polling-based monitoring platform, and there really wasn't a good polling, uh, polling system at the time, so Prometheus was created to actively monitor the containers running in the container cluster. Um, and uh, it's been fully open source the entire time. Um, uh, I don't know why it says 2015, but Prometheus was created as, as open source since the beginning in 2012. Uh, and it, we joined the CNCF and released uh, 1.0 in 2016. Uh, Prometheus 20, uh, 2.0 came out with a completely new TSDB in 2017. And uh, we created, we were a graduated project of the CNCF in 2018. Um, uh, we've got a cool documentary. If you want to, if you can scan that barcode. Oh, that's a little off the screen. Ha. Um, uh, but yeah, there's a Prometheus documentary up on YouTube. It's pretty great. Um, we have lots and lots of maintainers, lots of contributors, uh, and it's a. Uh, uh, a big and growing community of people. Uh, so we've been, you want to talk about the community? Yeah, so first of all, uh, one month ago, Prometheus crossed uh, 50K GitHub stars, so that was a really nice achievement for all the community. And basically, uh, in the last year, we have expanded the Prometheus team, so we have added a lot of new uh, members across the different uh, client libraries that we have. So like uh, we have uh, welcomed the new, uh, the Ruby maintainers. We have now an official Rust implementation, uh, Rust client library. So we are continuing to expanding the team. And in the coming years, we are also working more on the governance of Prometheus to be able to really scale up the team and the decision making processes inside of the Prometheus team. So that's all the new members that we have welcomed in the last year. So uh, now we can go a little bit over more of the detail, the Prometheus architecture. Uh, so the, the cool thing with Prometheus is uh, it can communicate with your targets. It's an agentless monitoring system, so every uh, application can instru be instrumented directly, so you don't have to have a, a middle agent to talk to. Uh, so Prometheus client libraries expose the metric data for those apps. Uh, and then it can also grab data from your systems and your other uh, services and C groups and other data, you know, your data stores. And those have exporters uh, so that will convert uh, internal systems uh, data like stuff from the Linux kernel, uh, all the data in slash proc. If you've got a MySQL database server, it'll query, make MySQL queries into the internal information schemas and performance schemas and expose that as Prometheus metrics. And similar, you can get the data from C groups and all the underlying infrastructure. Uh, all of that gets collected into your Prometheus time series database so that you can get all of the data about all of the running systems in a single uh, view, uh, which allows you to make much smarter uh, monitoring decisions. So that you can look at, say, hey, uh, I'm getting a lot of requests per second. 
uh, and I'm using a lot of CPU, so why don't we normalize how much CPU per request per second we're doing and decide if that's good or bad versus just looking at, oh, the CPU is really high. That doesn't really, isn't, uh, isn't a super useful uh, thing to alert on, whereas if the, uh, request per, uh, the CPU per request per second goes way up, then you might want to have an alert that, hey, something has gotten less efficient. Um, uh, Prometheus also has a, a concept of called service discovery. Instead of having to uh, program your targets to know where, where they are and where the monitoring system is, Prometheus can reach into your, uh, your inventory databases, whether it's Kubernetes uh, or Azure or GCP or AWS. It can read all of your uh, target lists dynamically and then collect all the data. So you have a positive source of truth of what should be installed, and Prometheus knows to go and collect that data and provide you the, um, the not just the metric data, but also that, the availability of your targets. Uh, then we, uh, when, you're done, when you've got all that data, now you want to visualize it, so there's external uh, uh, display platforms like Grafana and the web UI and uh, other automation like Kata, so if you have a Kubernetes cluster, you can autom use automatic scaling based on your Prometheus data. Uh, and then, of course, the Prometheus is not just a time series database and metrics collection, it's also designed to be a, a full monitoring platform. And so you can write your expressive PromQL alert rules uh, based on your uh, service level objectives or however you want to write your alerts, and that will go out to the Prometheus Alert Manager, which will notify your, uh, your on-call that you've got a problem. Right. So Prometheus is watching your systems when you, while you're sleeping. Uh, so the Prometheus data model, you want to go through that? Yes, yeah, so basically uh, Prometheus uh, is made to store time series. So each time series has an identifier and then we also have a time and a value for uh, those identifiers. And basically uh, what, what is really nice about the Prometheus model is that uh, the identifier is actually uh, a set of labels. So the, there is a metric name that tells you, okay, this is what this number is about, but you also have labels that can help you categorize, okay, this is uh, coming from that pod, this is that HTTP error code, and then you, you can uh, actually be really free to use the hierarchy that you want in your own data model, in your, the, the one that will match your topology. Um, and that data model is built in into every part of Prometheus, from the service discovery to the query language. And one of the cool things with the, uh, the data model of Prometheus is metric names are a great identifier which allows you to, cert to associate a metric name with a piece of source code. And so it's really easy to know, oh, hey, as a developer, or even as somebody who's maybe not familiar with a, with a code base, you're coming in as an SRE, and you're like, what is this thing? Well, you can find that metric name for your service in your code base and go, oh, that, in, that metric is going because this line of code changed. Um, and so now, uh, when you want to get data out of Prometheus, uh, there's a very high power uh, uh, query language that allows you to do complex vector expressions and co uh, complex data analysis with a very simple language. Uh, and uh, uh, unlike an SQL language, it's designed to deal with all of those labels and all that label uh, manipulation and matching uh, and things. So you don't have to do it. It makes joins of data much easier than with an SQL language. Do it. So this is an example of a uh, Prometheus query that just uh, enables you to easily query for um, the, the partition in an infrastructure with more than 100 gigabytes of capacity, uh, which are different than root. So you can see that, oh, in a very simple query, uh, you can express quite a complex question, and this is going across your complete infrastructure because we only care about the main point label in this case, and then we can do a quite easy numeric comparison based on that. And then similarly, you can uh, take those expressions and write alerts, uh, and so basically any, any result of that threshold will allow you to create an alert for some kind of problem like, for example, 500 errors coming from your application. And so uh, there, um, 
there are a lot of things out there that don't speak Prometheus. And so there's a huge ecosystem of, uh, I think, at least a, a thousand or two different uh, bridges that will bridge from other systems into Prometheus. And so that there's a huge uh, number of these out there, uh, both maintained by the Prometheus and the Prometheus community, as well as people just writing a thing that says, oh, hey, I've got my DSL router. How do I get the uh, current DSL state out of my DSL router? Well, there's, a, there's an exporter for that. Uh, and so it's really easy to get data in, into Prometheus from a variety of sources. Uh, and the Prometheus client libraries make it also easy to write your own. So uh, it's also important to know that to expose a metric in Prometheus, you just need to be able to serve HTTP. And just text over HTTP is enough to, to, to serve uh, metrics to Prometheus itself. So what's new in 2023? Um, so yeah, let, let's uh, look at the new stuff uh, in Prometheus uh, that we have uh, worked on this year. Uh, the first one is the native histograms. So basically, um, for those who are not familiar with the concept of um, histograms, uh, it's a way of measuring like um, uh, distribution of, of data. And Prometheus used to have like uh, an histogram being multiple time series, which is uh, the sites. Uh, the, the first image here is like what we used to have to show the latency of a service. Uh, and you can see, okay, um, you can see that when it's read, it's like there is a lot of requests going on. So you can see at this, at this stage, there are a lot of uh, requests that are below uh, five, milli, five milliseconds. But what the classic histograms, or we call them, they are very limited because each time series uh, has a lot of cost. So we have worked on the new native histogram uh, system that enables you to get much more granularity. So the data that you see in both pictures, uh, it is the same data, but it is using the classic histograms and the new histograms. So with the new histograms, you can clearly see uh, that actually like the, the requests are, yes, they are below five, uh, five milliseconds, but they're actually between um, uh, 125 milliseconds and, uh, and 9 milliseconds. So you get a much better story, reading of the story of what your services are actually doing, thanks to that new approach. And the nice thing is because we made them native in Prometheus, it means that instead of being like a set of time series, it is a new object that we store in the time series database of Prometheus. So it is very, very efficient. Uh, it, enable, it, enable, it enables us to have many uh, values and a really fine granularity in the histograms while keeping the cost almost, I think, even lower than the classic histograms. Yeah, so you can, you can get about 10 times the resolution of uh, uh, your histogram buckets with uh, the same cost in terms of memory and CPU usage in the server. So it's, it is a huge, huge improvement in terms of uh, if you've ever run into, oh, my histogram buckets have too much cardinality, I have to reduce the number of buckets. Well, now you don't have to think about that anymore. It's just automatic. So this is a bunch of talks if you want to catch up on the, on the new native histograms. Uh, they are all also available uh, natively in the Go uh, client libraries, and or they are also now a GA in the Java client library. Yep, and there's cool things you can do with that additional histogram. <laughs> then, uh, uh, so uh, another thing that we have been working on a lot in Prometheus, uh, and this is like the, quick, the technical details, but the, really the highlight is that we continue to dig into the performance of the Prometheus uh, server itself. So what we have done, for example, in this last year is what we call the string labels builds, which means that we have taken uh, a bunch, uh, the label representation in the Prometheus memory, which was like a third of the um, memory consumption of Prometheus, and we turned that into a different data structure that enables us to have a lot of uh, memory gain. So uh, if, you have a, if you are using Prometheus from one or two years ago, and you just upgrade now to the latest releases, you will find a lot of performance gains uh, just by upgrading the, the server itself. And we are continuing to work more and more on, on those. So we are introducing string interning later on uh, in the coming months, that which will even further reduce the CPU and the uh, memory usage of Prometheus. Yeah, we've, so, we've basically, uh, over the last year, have done a lot of performance optimization, optimizations. And if you went to Brian's talk yesterday, or if, you, or if you didn't go to Brian's talk yesterday, we've basically cut the amount of memory in Prometheus in half over the last couple of years for the same, uh, for the same uh, performance or the same, the same number of metrics. 
So we are also adding features to the, uh, to the regular um, Prometheus uh, uh, user experience, like uh, we, we have now in the alerting if you have alerts that are uh, crossing the threshold by a bit, or you, you see that they are flapping a bit, we now have a new feature co called key firing flow, which will help you reduce the flapping of your alerts, uh, and which will uh, reduce the, the noise with the resolved alerts that you might get. So uh, those are kind, um, we are still working on the basic user experience of Prometheus to improve it and to uh, make it a lot easier for you to write your alerting rules, because before that you could do it by uh, having complex PromQL expressions. Yep. But we also try to uh, keep Prometheus simple and easy for the people who are new to the community, so we also bring some nice features like that. So next to that, we, are also, we have also introduced a way to split your con Prometheus configuration file. So we see that people were using Prometheus, and traditionally we had one big Prometheus.yaml file, and almost everything was in that file. Now you can actually uh, decide to have multiple config maps and to just uh, like use script config files to like re, um, split your configuration, and this then also help you to um, to delegate part of your Prometheus configuration to different teams if you if you want to do that. So it also helps with the reliability of your configuration, uh, your Prometheus configuration. And what we also have uh, added, but this is very experimental, uh, we we have started working on open telemetry, and we have. I did support for a native uh, open telemetry receiver inside Prometheus. So if you have a TLP data, uh, which is uh, uh, ready made, so at the moment we don't do any transformation of that OTLP uh, data, but we have added support for it. So um, we are really, the, the story is that we are really experimenting with open telemetry natively in Prometheus. So we want to have a really nice user experience for the open telemetry users with Prometheus. Uh, we are also working on native compatibility, like uh, supporting like Unicode in the metrics name, so you can have the same metric uh, and label names that you have in your OTLP metrics, Prometheus metrics, your traces, uh, your, your logs. And we are also working on a new way to support the target info metadata that OpenTelemetry provides us. Also, again, we are looking for ways that we will integrate that into the PromQL system and in the complete Prometheus ecosystem to get a really nice user experience. And besides just Prometheus itself, we've also been doing a lot of good, cool work in the exporters in the community. Uh, for example, in the SNMP exporter, one of the biggest complaints and problems was uh, the authentication portion of the SNMP connection was uh, mixed with the actual walks and metric translation, and so we've split that up, and so now you can uh, uh, specify a list of walks and a specify a list of authentications. In addition, you can also do uh, uh, multiple scrapes, uh, or multiple walks uh, in the same scrape, and so now you can specify, you can more compose, uh, you can compose your SNMP configurations better. So who, who actually has to use SNMP? Nice, it's great. Um, same thing with MySQL. Uh, the MySQL exporter now supports the multi-target mode, so if you have MySQL databases hosted in a cloud platform as, say, a managed MySQL database, you can now point your Prometheus to a My single MySQL exporter, and it will talk to all the cloud databases. Uh, same thing in the Java, uh, we've also released a new uh, Java client with open telemetry su uh, support uh, and native histograms. Uh, the alert manager uh, has a bunch of new re receivers, so you can send your uh, alerts to other s services like MS Teams and Discord. Uh, the Windows exporter is now a, a, an official Prometheus project, uh, so if you've got Windows machines, uh, the Windows exporter is great for that. We are also uh and we are also now uh, taking the, uh, new, the bug scrub again in Prometheus. So the bug scrub in a weekly meeting uh, happening every Tuesday at 11 UTC. So if you want to join us and work with us on Prometheus, that's a really nice place because that's where we review the pull request, where we uh, try edge the different issues. So and every week we, you have Prometheus team members and community members joining that uh, online call and uh, really like that's how I actually learn a lot about what, uh, what I know with Prometheus, is really by joining those meetings and seeing the trade-offs that we have to make in the project. Uh, we've also been trying to revive the Prometheus ecosystem call. Uh, time zones are hard, uh, but uh, join us in the community. Um, 
we've also uh, adopted an Ansible uh, uh, collection. So if you have uh, bare metal nodes and you want to use Ansible, uh, you can now use an official Prometheus community uh, Ansible to deploy. So that's a bunch of other things that are coming now uh, in the Prometheus ecosystem, which I hope we will be able to be next year on stage and tell you that we have uh, done all of that. So we are working on metadata on a new UI for Alt manager. We are improving a lot the remote right, the native remote right of Prometheus, and we are adding even more OTLP. And lastly, next year we will also release Prometheus 3.0. So the 2.0 was seven years ago, and basically you can uh, get Prometheus 2.0 with your configuration and upgrade straight away to the 2.48 that's coming out uh, these weeks. And it should all work. Like we have not made any breaking change for users, uh, but we want to fix some mistakes to improve a uh, lot the user experience. So we will release a 3.0. So if you have any feedback that you want to offer to the team, if you, we are really listening to users. Uh, and this is a good time for like some uh, bigger changes. Cool. So questions? Come up to the mic. So there is a microphone on, on that side. On either side. And on. Oh, there, is there? No, there's only one over here. Do we have a hand mic we can hand out? Or do you have to go to the podium? <laughs> Anybody else want to queue up for questions? Yeah, so I, and I guess if there's not many questions I can ask. So these are like minor pet peeve things. I just want to get your thoughts and sure. other people's thoughts. Um, the config. So in a lot of cases, we're running these as agent mode. So you know you've got the stripped down one. These are kind of hard to reach clusters, say. And it works brilliant. You know, agent mode with like the bulk receiver works really well. But we want to push config map updates out you know we want to tweak changes sure and we can't reach those prometheus and there isn't a native reload the config if it's bad just go back to the other one type scenario you've always got to use another product yeah we start it is that something do you think that might get addressed in the future because I'm, I'm sure it bugs a lot of people um it, that's an interesting idea so the for example the prometheus operator has a uh, a config reloader sidecar, and it's mostly focused around Kubernetes. Yeah. And so if you're running the Prometheus operator, you already have this, okay. uh, and you'll, auto you'll get those, those automatic remote reloads with the, pr with the Prometheus operator. Yeah. But if you're not on Kubernetes, uh, yeah, there's not really a universal sidecar for that, because you know, what, what would be the option to, you know, we'd have to think about, like, what data sources could we pull from? Would, would we pull blindly from an HTTP endpoint and, and download that and then reload? Yeah. That would be relatively easy, but you know, there's, uh, do we want to read from NFS? But, so, you know, there, there's lots uh, of options. There is a consensus to have uh, automatic reload of the produce configuration, but someone from the community has to write it. Oh, OK. Yeah, so so, uh, so, so if, you, if you just touch the file on disk, yeah. there's uh, uh, there's a proposal, but we, no, somebody needs to implement the, uh, the, the notifies. And that's it. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. We're using Kubernetes without the yeah. operator, and it's just that file's changed, and it, and it doesn't bother looking. All and right, we'll have a bunch of Pull request, welcome. Yeah, Excellent. So, and then if you push then a config back, then you will we, be able to just reload the config. OK, cool. And I've got one more quick question, and everyone else can go. And this is really just a, a, a thought, and everyone else will probably hate it. But sometimes some of your labels, some of the labels have a value in it. And it would be really nice if in a query you could declare that that's a value and say, sum up these label values. I know that would probably be a horrid thing to do, but yeah, I think, is that something that gets talked about? Because that would be we, really we, nice. We get, the, we get that request every few months. Yeah. Uh, somebody, we, I don't think we've actually had any approved proposals for doing that uh, data manipulation yeah. at the label level. OK, cool, cool. I, I, I think every time we ask for use cases and, uh, well, I, I think if we have a use case, we understand what people want, it will be easier for us to, to accept that because, you know, uh, when you start teaching with label values, there is a hundred ways to represent the float value. Yeah, yeah. So if we could know what people you want to do, then we could find the, the correct solution for you. Yeah. Excellent, yeah. excellent. All right, thank you very much. No problem. We've got plenty of time. Hey, uh, my question is more on the evolution on the client side. Sure. So we were using some legacy tools for infrastructure metrics. We then replaced with Prometheus client side. 
and now we have OTL emerging for our logs, traces, and metrics. So on the client side, we seems to be having like Prometheus on one side, and we have the OTL. Do you see Prometheus evolving more to be a server side to store metrics in the long run, with OTL library being replacing it as the standard one? Or uh, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm just deployer, right? I just deployed to hundreds and thousands of nodes and just looking for the. Um, yeah. Personally, I think the OTEL metrics collector is an anti-pattern because it's, it ruins the active monitoring that Prometheus provides. Uh, and, uh, but there are lots of people doing, and for better or worse, re-implementing re Prometheus exporters in open telemetry. We, we're go we, we support both. What, what we are also seeing is some, ex some client libraries, like the Java client library, they, all, they already support OTLP, and we really want people to buy in into the Prometheus client libraries so that they know that if they need to switch to OTLP, they can also do it without instrumenting their application again. So uh, we, we still see a lot of usage for the Prometheus client libraries, and uh, we, are not, we are not giving up on the Prometheus client libraries at all in the, in the future years. I recently spent some time implementing both a standard Prometheus client exporter as well as the open telemetry version of that exporter. And I was curious, and I think you might have touched on this in the last answer, but are there any particular things that you feel like OTEL does really well? You're adding support for a number of things in, in the Prometheus time series space, right? Not, not the logging in the, but are there any particular concepts that they do really well or you perhaps you disagree with and you think you do better or what would you recommend for some of these cases and when to consider one or the other? Sure. So one of the, I, you know, one of the things a long time ago we looked, you know, I was, we, there's a project called Metrics 2.0, and it had a lot of cool ideas around more well-defined structure of metric data, including, you know, native support for making types and things. Uh, and Open Telemetry has a bunch of the same, uh, and it's, it has this flexibility but it also makes it so much co more complicated. And worse, you end up with things in open telemetry like your label values are, uh, can be multiple different data types. So in Prometheus, we very strictly defined label values or strings, at, but open telemetry doesn't have that restriction. So you end up with too much flexibility. And uh, I have this horrible prediction that developers are going to make this uh, just as bad as SNMP where you're going to have random values uh, that are numbers and strings, or strings and numbers, uh, and your HTTP status code could be a float 64, and we don't know. And so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that, that develops. Thank you. Thanks for the talk. Uh, I'm Tomoya with Sony. So do you guys happen to have like a working group or community meeting for the use cases for the edge IoT use cases? Sorry, say this. I, edge say IoT, like uh, edge devices? <sighs> edge devices is a really interesting subject. Um, I don't think we have a really big community around that. And I would love to see it. Um, uh, but nobody in the Prometheus team has really taken up the, the edge device IoT mantle. No, what we, also, we have now is a Prometheus agent, which is a way that you can run Prometheus on the edge without the time series database. So it is like uh, you have the, the, the memory consumption of Prometheus, and you can deploy it on a lot smaller devices. And then it can push data to a central uh, Prometheus or Mimi or Cortex. Yeah, but that's still, that's still, still not huge. as lightweight as, say, a mosquito uh, collector. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'd love to, I'd love to see a, a, an official, like, uh, IoT, like MQTT to Prometheus, uh, like ingester as part of the project, but somebody, somebody in, the, in the ecosystem needs to maintain that. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for the talk. So uh, I know high cardinality matrix is something that you hear all the time and don't like to hear about it, but are there any plans to make that, improve that, where you could have maybe, you know, cardinality of a million labels is okay? 
So, yeah, so the issue nowadays that we see, uh, this is what I see with customers, it's not really the high cardinality metrics, it's really like the churn that you can have in a time series. So if you have a lot of time series that just leads for like one, two minutes, and you have thousands of them, then you have an issue. But we are optimizing a lot for the value labels and everything. So high cardinality, uh, if you have like fixed time series, it's uh, not an issue to have like multiple uh, thousands of uh, label values for one label. We see that a lot actually. Uh, but really like, um, we are working on that a lot and like what I talk about memory reduction and the fact that we will soon intern strings uh, will also help a lot with that. So we are really working on that issue uh, actively and uh, it's, it's less of a problem now that it was one year ago and I expect that in one year it will even be even less of a problem. Yeah. No, I, I generally see you know, people running Prometheus in, single Prometheus instances with uh, tens of millions of series these days but millions on a single label is not something a lot of people are, are working on. Uh, we have, I, there's been some discussions about uh, having a, uh, a different data model for storing very high cardinality, you know, single, single label million time series uh, by completely rewriting the, the t uh, a new TSDB that would be based on something more like parquet files, but that's, all just theoretical ideas right now. And one more question, like, do you hear reports of when you have high cardinality that generates a lot of time series, then the scrape performance gets worse on the client side, or putting that together, data together on the client side leads that, to severe drop in performance for the thing being scraped? That usually depends on the client library involved. So for example, the, the Node.js library had a bunch of performance problems uh, but Reddit and a few other uh, organizations actually did a bunch of work to improve the Node.js client library to be better uh, to have significantly better performance with t hundreds of thousands of, of metrics per scrape. Um, but yeah, it, it tends to be a problem based on the language involved and not, uh, not Prometheus itself. Okay, so your goal is to keep it at a, so an HTTP pull text-based model only, not evolve into like do a streaming or something like that, which is a, much, a yeah, bit no, easier on the client. We, 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 we pretty much want to stick to the, the scrape model because, that, because it, it provides a nice atomic unit because Prometheus itself is actually an ACID compliant database. And so we want to have this transactionality of a transaction insert to avoid uh, uh, PromQL transaction issues because in a lot of the very detailed uh, uh, SLO calculations, you want to make sure that you're not seeing uh, partial scrapes in, and partial data uh, because that can make your SLOs wrong. Great answers. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Great talk, by the way. So as we get to this point where a lot of companies are getting bigger and are starting to want to gather more metrics, sometimes people get a little overzealous with what they want to collect. How, or do you have any guides or any resources that you would recommend to people on how, A, not to overdo it, and B, maybe how to handle augmenting what you collect as you grow so as not to let it become unbounded? That's a, that's a long conversation. Um, uh, the Prometheus docs have some good guidelines. Uh, docs on things like Thanos and Mimir uh, also have some very good guidelines on how to scale things. Um, the, for example, if, if you're in Kubernetes, uh, the, uh, one of the patterns that I've been uh, working on at, uh, at Reddit is we actually have a controller that creates a Prometheus per namespace to do na uh, uh, application team isolation. So we have one Kubernetes namespace, one application, one Prometheus. And that way, uh, if a team causes some giant cardinality explosion, uh, their explosion is limited to their namespace, and they only hurt themselves. Uh, and so that, that's helped us a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, well, what you can also do is uh, we have the Prometheus query log now that we can enable, so you can see actually which metrics are used and queried. Uh, and uh, if you enable that for like a couple of for a couple of days, you can then look. Okay, we only use like uh, 300 metrics. So what are the, what are what else are you uh, exposing as metrics? And you can start analyzing more precisely what you have. Cool. Great. Thank so you. That's all the time we have. Thanks. Thank you.